Why do you have to like I have no idea. No. No, I'm Nate. Who is that? You work here? He's one of the owners. FBI. Yeah. You good? Huh? I got you. Get your hands off. Get your hands off. Somehow the FBI has the time and the resources to gather this small army of agents to descend upon a man that they don't necessarily have evidence committed a crime, but they have yet to pour this kind of resources and time and energy and manpower into bringing into questioning some of the names, even one of the names found in the Jeff Epp PEDO book. Make it make sense. Make any of this make sense. This guy right here, his name is Nathan Earl Hughes. He's 34 years old. He was arrested in Fayetteville, Arkansas on four charges, including a felony count of interfering with police during a civil disorder. And this guy just so happens to be a friend of the conservative media personalities, the Hodge twins, and the Hodge twins sent out this tweet. It was on their Twitter page and on their Instagram page. And they say last week, a friend of ours was raided by the feds over J6. His name is Nathan Hughes, and he is from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Nathan was raided by the FBI and arrested at gunpoint. His girlfriend, was that necessary, FBI? Was it really necessary? Don't you have better things to do with your time? What is the actual guilt? What was the probable cause? What did this guy supposedly do? His girlfriend, who had just had a miscarriage, was held at gunpoint and put in... Let's just call them what they are, torture cuffs. The FBI turned off his security cameras, unplugged his internet, and flipped his house upside down in the search. Now, if you were interested in transparency, if you thought, if you just had an inkling of a thought that you are the good guy doing good things to secure liberty for Americans and eradicate terrorism from this planet, wouldn't you do the opposite of this? Wouldn't you make sure there were plenty of cameras rolling so that you could prove to humanity that what you're doing is above board, it's right, it is in concert with justice, and yet they get rid of the spotlight. They eradicate transparency. Why? Why, FBI? The feds called the manufacturer of his Liberty gun safe and got the passcode to get into it too. How did they know that he had a Liberty gun safe, first of all? And how was the Liberty gun safe listed on the warrant? Because as you'll recall, it has to be specific. The warrant has to be specific. And let me just refresh your memory on what the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution is. Because remember, this is supposed to still be the supreme law of the land. It says the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue. In other words, a judge can't issue a warrant unless there is probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing, particular, specifically describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. So before they even went into that house, before they even got the search warrant, how did they know that he had a Liberty safe? And how did they know where the safe was? And how did they know to issue a warrant that was particular to the persons or places to be seized, searched and seized, seized according to the Fourth Amendment? Because that is the supreme law of the land, right? Or is it, practically speaking? They got the passcode from Liberty Safe. We'll try to talk about that in a second. All for protesting at the Capitol over two and a half years ago. He is being charged with crimes related to January 6th. He didn't, according to the Hodge twins, he didn't assault anyone. He didn't vandalize anything. He's being labeled a domestic terrorist and a traitor to his country by woke leftists and the media. Well, apparently also, according to the FBI. 
Nate is just like us. He's an outspoken American patriot. He loves freedom, loves his country, and would do anything to preserve our rights. He's been fighting to save our country for years now. He's also a small business owner with a family that relies on him. We all know how heated this political climate is getting, but they pushed too far. They pushed, they've been pushing too far for a long time long time now. They've been taking far too much money. They've been removing far too many of our rights. They've been laying down plans and agendas and pushing narratives for decades and decades, at least since the mid-1970s under the church committee, where it was revealed that the CIA had successfully infiltrated all of print and news media. That's according to Operation Mockingbird. If you can believe what the federal government released in their declassified documents, that's what they called it. So they said, we all know how heated this political climate is getting, but they push too far and it's time for people to speak up for people getting screwed by the system. BLM and Antifa can go burn down our cities and get off the hook, but Trump supporters get raided and rounded up for protesting. This looks like another way to make an example of people to get you to shut up and to stop protesting and stop calling to light the things that they're doing in darkness. Nate's legal bills to fight these charges will be over $100,000. So we're donating $5,000 to Nathan's Defense Fund to start it out. And we hope you can donate something too. But I want to show you where, uh, this is the video that shows the moment that the agents went to his business reportedly and swooped down on him while not one person in Jeff Epps' black book has been treated the same way. Let's watch. Always record the police. Hey, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Here, watch out, watch out, watch out. Why do you have to? Look at this. No. No, I'm Nate. Who is it? You are here? He's one of the owners. FBI. You good? Huh? I got you. Now, right here is the moment they all pulled into his property and raided it. Watch how many cars here. Let's count them. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Look at the resources, the time, the energy, the labor. Six. Seven. That's at 939.02. So we got seven so far. Nine thirty nine fourteen. So it's eight nine ten. Ten vehicles to go raid a fellow American's home. Now here's what Liberty Safe said. They put out a tweet themselves and they're trying to do a little bit of splaining. On August 30th, 2023, Liberty Safe was contacted by the FBI requesting the access code to the safe of an individual for whom they had a warrant to search their property. Our company protocol is to provide access codes to law enforcement if warrants uh, warrant grants them access to the property. After receiving the request, we receive proof of the valid warrant. Now, remember, it's supposed to be particularly describing the places to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. How did they obtain that from the warrant before they went into the house? Did they get the warrant to get into the house and then an extra warrant 
when they got in the house, when they found out what he had, oh, there's a safe here. We need to get get an extra warrant right there because we need to specifically show where we need to be searching. Is that how it went down? I don't know. I'm just wondering. After receiving the request, we received proof of the valid warrant and only then did we provide them with an access code. You remember Apple, what was it? The San Bernardino shooter? Apple said, nope, uh-uh, no way, no how. In that context, where this guy is actually uh, demonstrably causing harm to other people or jeopardizing or risking other lives, Apple said, nope, we're not doing it. We don't, we don't divulge that kind of information. If you want that kind of information, you ain't getting it from us. Why couldn't Liberty have done that? I mean, their name is Liberty. It's not tyranny. It's Liberty safe, not tyranny unsafe. Liberty safe had no knowledge of any of the details surrounding the investigation at the time. Who cares? Who cares? Look what you did. Liberty safe is devoted to protecting the personal property and second amendment rights of our customers. Uh, in word, that's it. When it comes right down to brass tacks and where the rubber meets the road, you kind of do the opposite of what you just said there. And has repeatedly denied requests for access to codes without a warrant in the past. We do not give out combinations without proper legal documentation being provided by authorities. We regularly update our policies to ensure both compliance with federal and state law and reasonable customer privacy protections within the law. Why not just say, we don't need to re- we don't need to update our p- policies ever because we will always err on the side of freedom. We will always take the side of liberty. We will always have your back. There's no updating our policies. That's where we stand. And it's always going to be like that. But that's not what they said. They said we regularly update our policies to ensure both compliance with the federal authorities and state authorities and reasonable customer privacy protections within the law. First and foremost, Liberty Safe is committed to preserving our customers' rights, and we will remain unwavering in this value. It's a bunch of word salad in light of what you just did, and people have a serious problem with that. Cernovich says, Liberty Safe confirms they gave feds access code to gun safe during a raid on January 6th. The Punisher says America's top safe manufacturer, Steven Crowder weighs in and says, Liberty safe, more like I'm not buying your stupid effing safe. Guns, guns and Gadgets weighs in on that. Are your guns safe with Liberty safe? Malcolm Flex says the comment section on Liberty's account is more secure than your guns are in their product. Oh yeah, here we go. Look at this. Just a reminder that Apple has stood up for the privacy rights of terrorists more than Liberty safe has for lawful gun owners. Boom. Ouch. This was actually funny because I saw this Sean Hannity thing and somebody superimposed FBI glasses on Sean Hannity, bought and paid for Sean Hannity. Tim Poole says, I don't care that Liberty Safe gave the codes to the feds. I care that they had the codes in the first place. Well, I think you should care about that. And this is also a concern. It's not either or. It's not this false dichotomy of it's it's either this or it's this. I think it's a combination, no pun intended accommodation of both liberty safes are completely worthless yeah if somebody else has your access code um i don't know it's not a safe it's a it's a filing cabinet sean hannity is going to make a sales pitch for liberty my friends at liberty safe listen i have two huge liberty safes in my house i have one because i'm rich i make 29 million dollars a year on my fox gig on my phone news gig little problem i forgot my combination and i lost my key but my friends at Liberty, they took care of me. They got me a key. They got me my combination. And everything's great again. And everything I have is totally and completely safe thanks to Liberty Safes. No, it isn't. No, it's not, Sean. I wonder if Sean is eating his words right now. Well, just remember, the right of the people to be secure in their purses, houses, persons, houses, papers, and effects shall be secure against unreasonable searches and seizures. No warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. And the key, the qualifier there is that there has to be probable cause. So my question is, was there probable cause? We know that the FBI and the ATF major in not having probable cause, and they want to lean on reasonable, articulable suspicion from Terry v. Ohio in 1968, which is way lower than the probable cause standard. 
Maybe that's what they mean. And then they conflate reasonable, articulable suspicion with probable cause as though they were the same and they are not. They are not legally and they are not practically speaking. Hughes is accused of, here's what, here's what the accusation is. Hughes is accused of joining a mob in the Lower West Terrace Tunnel where some of the most, you know what, fighting took place to push against the police line. He's also accused of trying to wrest a riot shield away from an officer. So there's, there's accusations. There are charges. There seems to be little or no evidence. The way they got him was they identified him by his ears. Apparently, he's got some kind of says included with this image is a photo of an individual who based upon my review of records maintained by the state of Arkansas and surveillance conducted by the FBI, I know to be Hughes. Hughes' distinct notches at the top of his ears match those of the person who engaged in, you know what, in the lower west tunnel on J6 2021 at that place in Washington's District of Criminals. And they say that this is Hughes right here. And based upon these assertions, or assumptions or suggestions, that's why they picked him up and did to him what they wouldn't do to the client list and you know who's little black book. Leave your thoughts about this. I mean, I'm open. Do you think this guy actually committed a crime worthy of the FBI raiding him? Do you think this is basically a signal and a message from the FBI and the intelligence agencies and the alphabet soup agencies and fake stream CIA infiltrated Operation Mockingbird MK Ultra Media? This is a message to get across to America that, hey, this is how we're going to treat you. Ain't nobody going to be safe if you're out there protesting. We got your number, we'll find you, we'll get a warrant, we'll find out what you got in your house, we'll ransack you fellow Americans. I mean, how far are we gonna let this go? Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought, please, in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know, really engage in the comments because it helps me tip over and turn upside down the algorithms, the censorship algorithms that are in place on channels like this. If you want to support the channel further, there are links in the description or you can grab a hard-hitting conversation starting design from the store. You can put on a shirt, hoodie, mug, cell phone case, whatever. But the takeaway of this whole thing is and should always be that Freedom has a price, and that price is eternal vigilance. And indifference to this notion is the means by which the people have and will secure their own oppression.